We're going to talk about the Ditex surge suppressor. The Ditex surge suppressor is an inline surge suppressor. In general, this interrupts any incoming lines to your gate opener. To understand how to wire this to your gate opener, any wires that you have coming in that are over five feet long, you want to protect with an inline surge suppressor. You'll notice on this side, it says input unprotected. On this side, it says output protected. So the lines feeding into the gate opener would feed into these. You'll notice there are sets of terminals because most lines have two leads to it that are leading to your gate opener. We have data that is five volt. We have a 12 volt and we have a 24 volt. So the pair here, you can run 24 volts through. The pair here, you can run 12 volts through. And the pair here, you can run data through, five volts. This is a one volt. Typically, this is not used with the gate opener. The five volt is typically used for any relays. So, for example, any gate opener equipment that will be fed into the same terminals to close a relay and activate the gate opener can all go into this. So, for example, let's say you have a push button and two keypads all wired to the same two terminals on the gate opener. You would feed the two relay wires from all three of those devices into these two terminals. On the back side, you would have two wires coming out and going to the two terminals on the control board that these wires used to connect to. The 12 volt can also be used to protect the relays, but you can also use it for incoming power if it's 12 volt power. The 24 volt can be used for lower power sources such as 12 volt, as long as you don't exceed the 24 volt. Another way of looking at the input terminals on the surge suppressor is if you already have the wires going to the control board, the way to know where to wire them on here would be to designate these the same as they are on the control board. For example, you have two terminals on a control board that have two wires coming from your transformer. Nominate these two terminals as your terminals on a control board. Now you just take them out of your control board, move them over to these two terminals, and then on the back side of this, the two corresponding terminals will complete the circuit to the control board where they were. It is important to understand the principle of how this works. This does not block surges. What happens is the electricity enters the surge suppressor. If it is detected to be a surge, it opens up the ground lead, which is this green wire. It creates a path of least resistance and the energy is directed down to your grounding rod. Now there are a couple of principles involved to ensure that the power does go to the path of least resistance. First, the wire coming off the surge suppressor that leads to your equipment must be greater than three feet in length and also must be longer than the lead that goes to your grounding rod. The ground lead must be a thick gauge wire. 12 gauge would work out very well for this. It must be as short as possible to a grounding rod. It's best not to use an existing grounding rod that you use for your house. It's best to drive a new grounding rod in the ground right next to the gate opener system. Do not use anything such as wire nuts. Wire nuts create resistance. This ground lead must be the path of least resistance. Use bus connectors or soldered connections to connect this green wire to a longer wire if you need a longer wire than this. For the wire that leads from this surge suppressor to the control board, because it needs to be long, it can be coiled up. Notice we have five feet of wire here. It's coiled and zip tied. You could use this in between the surge suppressor and the control board and still have these two items located in the control box neat and organized.